Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. Have you ever tried to follow the instructions for installing a PL259 or a UHF mail connector on some RG58 or maybe RG8X or RG59 or other smaller size coax and it never looked as nice or pretty as the pictures that you saw in the instructions? You just can't get the braid to fold back over that reducer. It ends up all straggly and a mess. So then you try combing the braid out and fold the individual strands back. Now you assemble the connector only to see one or two little pieces or strands of the braid in the little soldering windows. Mechanically and electrically, this just feels like junk. I don't like this, but it's the best I can do. I, I tried. Well, today I have a really slick solution for you that'll leave you feeling all warm and fuzzy about your coax termination. I can't take credit for this. I learned it from Dan Richardson, K6MHE. I have to give credit to where credit is due. Now I've put a link to the document that I got this from in the description below. Now don't forget to click on like and subscribe to this channel if you find this helpful. Well, let me show you how this is done. The first step is to take your reducer. If you happen to have a silver plated reducer, you're ready to go. If, on the other hand, you have one of the nickel plated ones, then take a piece of emery cloth and run that reducer on the emery cloth until you abrade away the nickel plating all the way down to the brass and then you'll be ready to prepare your reducer. And so I'm just going to touch the end of my reducer in a little soldering paste, just a little tiny bit on there, just to make sure that it gives me a good solder. We're going to tin the very end of this reducer. The next step is to tin the very end of this. You don't want it to get down inside, you don't want it on the outside, you just want the very end here. And so I'm going to take my soldering gun and I'm just, it just takes a little tiny bit of solder, so we're just gonna... The soldering gun is just tinned on the end and I'm running the soldering gun around the end. You can see the tinning on the end of the reducer for our PL259. We now have to prepare our coax, so we strip the outer sheath off about one inch back from the end of the coax. At this point don't forget to put on the back shell of the connector and the reducer onto your coax. Trim back the shield so that it extends only one quarter of an inch past your outer sheath. Next, fold your shield back across the top of your reducer. I like to put just a little bit of soldering paste on here. Again, very, very uh, small amounts. You don't need to, to douse this in soldering paste. You want this to solder as quickly and easily as possible. With the reducer pushed up against the shield, carefully and quickly solder the shield to the end of the reducer, giving some time from time to time for things to cool. Be careful not to damage the center insulator. It is soldered completely in place. The next step is trimming this. We're just going to take our really good side cutters and we're going to just go around and give this a haircut all the way around. Now it looks like this. Next we have to strip back the inner insulation three quarters of an inch from the end. Now we're ready to put this into the connector itself. Be sure to tighten this reducer into your connector very nice and tight. You don't want that coming loose. But just to make sure, and to make sure that we have a really good electrical connection, we are going to add some solder right here in one of these soldering ports. We're going to solder this, the reducer to the body of the connector. We're going to take just, again, just a little bit of soldering paste and put it in the hole a little bit, 
and around the hole we want to make sure that everything works out nice and clean and then we take our soldering gun wait for it to get good and hot now I like to stick the corner of my soldering gun into the hole and then we will heat things up real well and make sure that we got some solder in there now this does two things for us it makes sure that that reducer doesn't unscrew itself but it also makes sure that we have a good electrical connection with the reducer to the body of the connector all right now I'm going to trim the center conductor I place this so it's at a 45 degree angle and then being careful not to get solder on the outside of this center pin In the end, with it at a 45 degree angle, you can see that it makes a very nice end for your coax. The only thing left then is to put it together. It's nice and stable. That's not going anywhere. It's electrically good. It's, it is uh, mechanically good. You are good to go slick and simple as can be well there you go it's easy to do it's electrically reliable it's mechanically robust it's the best solution that i've ever seen to do this if you're trying to put a pl259 uhf mail on larger coax like rg8 i have another video click on the link up here to go to this video which shows you how to do this in an equally slick and easy way if you found this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, toodaloots.